So, hey guys, you just heard a part of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song from back from the 1980s when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles TV show was first up and going. And it was also the show that brought the Turtles to fame since the comic book had a very limited release back when that first came out. Uh, but luckily the TV show got it big and famous. We have four films before this one, and now it's rebooted once again, unfortunately, by producer Michael Bay. Um, so for this new reboot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you guys, it very much is the origin that you're familiar with. Um, so if you've seen the original TV show, if you've read the comic books, or I would say even if you've seen the Fox Box version of Ninja Turtles all the way back from the early 2000s, um, you're basically going to get the same story here again. Um, there is a few new twists and turns along the way this time around. Um, I guess the best way for me to say it without spoiling the movie is that April O'Neil is very much more connected this time around than she was in previous origin stories of the Turtles. Um, there's much more of a laboratory approach this time around. Though in previous versions as well, though TGRI played a very big part in how the Turtles became to be, TGRI is in this movie, but in a different way, in a different context, I should say. Um, so basically, you know, throughout this film, like I said, we get that origin story. We get a few little twists and turns along the way that are different this time. Uh, this film also plays off more of April O'Neil really trying to get a story, a uh, big story for her career. Uh, you know, she's an up-and-coming journalist. She really doesn't have a lot of stories to show off for her journalist career. And so, you know, the, this thing with the Foot Clan is getting very big within the city. And um, once she meets the turtles, once she discovers these turtles and, you know, figures out that, you know, they're kind of the, kind of the first big thing to really be a threat to this Foot Clan thing going on in the city, uh, she really wants to get a story out of it. So this film's kind of her journey of getting a story out of these turtles and as well as um, April O'Neil getting caught in the mix of the turtles finding out more about how they're the way they are as well as stopping something that is also the thing that kind of got them the way they are as well. So for Ninja Turtles, you guys, this new 2014 reboot, I enjoyed the movie. I didn't hate the movie. Um, I know a lot of critics are really giving it a lot of crap right now. I know a lot of the really hardcore fanboys who really just absolutely had to have the origin the way it was in the comic books and in the TV show, the 80s one. Um, you know, are probably not going to be too happy with this version because it does change some pretty significant things about the things we know about the Turtles. Um, but I enjoyed the movie. I thought it's an enjoyable film. Um, you know, I wouldn't hate myself for watching it again. I really don't think it's that bad. Um, will I own it someday? I guess that depends on how good of a deal I get on it, if I find a good deal ever for it. Maybe the opening Blu-ray or DVD day will have a good price for it. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but, you know, I didn't hate the movie. I really did not hate the movie. So I guess the best way to really show that I didn't hate the film, but at the same time I didn't absolutely fell in love with it, is for me to go over my positives and negatives of the new Ninja Turtle reboot. So my positives and negatives of the new Ninja Turtle reboot, you guys, um, I think the Turtles' interactions was perfectly done. Um, it really knew how the Turtles talked to each other in the comics, how they talked to each other in the original 80s TV show. Um, I, I just love the interaction between these Turtles. They know how to play off of each other very well. The actors they got to do the motion capture work and the voice work for the Turtles all did terrific jobs. Um, I know Johnny Knoxville, voice-wise, replays the voice of the guy who did the motion capture for Leonardo. And I know the guy who um, did the motion capture for Master Splinter uh, got his voice replaced by Tony Shalhab from the TV show Monk, for those who've seen that show. Um, and I was, like I said, I, I really think the Turtles really knew how to interact with each other. These actors really knew how to bring those four unique characteristics of each of these four turtles, you know, the leader, the tough guy, the, the goofy one, and the smart one, all together into the same film very well. So huge compliments about 
the way the turtles interacted in this movie. My next big compliment about this film is there really are some several great action scenes in this. Um, you know, a lot of them are briefly shown in the trailer. One that you might have seen in the trailer that you recognize, you know, play out in a much bigger sense in the movie is, you know, the turtles showing up at the subway station to take down the Foot Clan while the lights go out. April O'Neil is trying to get footage of the turtles there. Um, you know, the whole snow slope scene that was shown in the trailer, um, that actually played a pretty big, that was actually a bigger chunk of action for this film, that scene with the snow slope. Um, so that was another very good action scene. I would even say the final fight with Shredder in this film was pretty enjoyable. Uh, I would also say the fight with Splinter and Shredder was also very good, since Splinter, you know, is, is very experienced out of all these fighters. Um, so just very good uh, action scenes in this. Not every single one of them is great, but for the most part, most of these action scenes, I would say, are pretty enjoyable. Uh, the film has some, some some traditional Teenage Ninja Turtle origins and some new ones, like I was talking about earlier. And I really like that. I really, I like how it's not just that traditional, you know, we've heard it a million times kind of story again. They really added some new ones in there, uh, some new elements, some new twists and things like that. Um, and I think overall they really mesh really well. They really um, bring a really enjoyable experience. We get to see the turtles we know and love, the origin that they've always had. And we get to see some new sides of that origin for once as well. And as a result, I really enjoyed it. I also like how April O'Neil, um, we get to kind of see her desperate journalist side of her personality. And one thing that, you know, I know a lot of people were complaining about before the film came out and even during it when, when the first verse came out, you know, for opening weekend or for the opening day, I should say as well, is a lot of people you know, were complaining that, oh, Megan Fox wasn't the right choice for April O'Neil. I will say this. Uh, that desperate journalist side of April O'Neil I thought was very well done with Megan Fox here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Megan Fox. You know, I liked the first Transformers movie. Um, but other than that, you know, not much else she's been in that I really, really enjoyed. Um, but I think the desperate journalist side of April O'Neil I thought was very well done by Megan Fox. Um, I do think Anna Kendrick would have been the better choice because I know she was talked about for the role at one point for April O'Neil. But regardless, Megan Fox did a good job for what she had to work with, and she really got that desperate journalist side of her um, out of the way pretty well, and um, she did a good job. I guess that's the best way to say it. I also like how there's tons of old uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle throwbacks in this. You know, the whole classic, I will dine on turtle soup tonight, Shredder line is in this. Uh, you know, the Heroes in the Half Shell line is in this. The Cowabunga line is in this. Uh, if it's a big classic Ninja Turtle line from the comics or TV show, it's in here in some way, shape, or form. And it was really cool to see how they worked those in. So tons of great Ninja Turtle throwbacks here. So if you're a fan of the Turtles, you'll like all those throwbacks that both Jonathan Livesman, the director, added into the movie, as well as Michael Bay, the producer, and the writers of this film. I think one of them was Jack Applebaum of um, Beverly Hills Cop 1 and Mission Impossible 4. For the negatives of this uh, film, you guys, I do think the film had too many plot cheats. There was a lot of uh, moments in this film where you're kind of wondering, you know, how would that work? Or, you know, there was just not enough backup or support or, you know, evidence as to, you know, oh, how could this character do this? How did this person know where this person lived? How did that get there? Uh, there was a lot of just little plot cheats that happened along the way that just felt like a plot cheat. And it was, it, you couldn't help but notice that it was a plot cheat while watching the movie. So I uh, didn't really care for those. Um, there were some occasional shaky cans, specifically before we meet the turtles. You know, I understand they want to keep the turtles in the shadows. But if you watch the original 1990 Ninja Turtles film, the way they handled it, I thought was much better there before we're supposed to meet the turtles than the ones than the scenes shown in this film before. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, before the turtles are you know physically shown, before we get a good glimpse of what they look like, um, the scenes before that where you know they're trying to fight these ninjas, these uh, Foot Clan ninjas off in secret, there's a lot of shaky cam done on the parts where. Maybe the CGI didn't look too good or things like that. And so, as a result, they kind of got in the way, which is kind of too bad. 
Another negative I have about this film is the look and the CGI for Master Splinter I really didn't think was very good. I think they just could have found a better look for him, and they could have improved upon the CGI they used for Master Splinter because what they used here I really was not a big fan of. I also thought Will Arnett's character had too many perverted comments throughout the film. I understand it's PG-13. I know you can get away with more stuff in this kind of a film than a PG film. Uh, but after a while, it just kind of, it felt like something that you would see in an R-rated film, and it didn't seem appropriate for a kind of film like this. So uh, his perverted comments also just kind of got old after a while. I just kind of wanted to see the neat side of this character's personality. Um, I liked the character overall. You know, Will Arnett's character very much reminded me of, like, something you'd see from Michael Keaton in, like, the original Batman or something. Uh, but just the perverted comments really got old after a while. And I just really wanted to see the neat side of this character's personality. Because there was a neat side of the personality. It just got flooded by all these perverted comments that I'm sure Michael Bay and the writers of the film made him say throughout the movie. There's also a lot of Michael Bayized moments, you know, the close-up of the boobs, close-up of the butt of the women, um, you know, the whole, you know, the, the turtles are on this billboard in one scene, and, you know, they're covering up the where the nipples are on the woman's boobs and uh, for a Victoria's Secret commercial, and just a lot of things that, you know, a lot of films back in the day would have not gotten away with a PG-13 rating, and films today you know you know that would get away with that in a PG-13 rating and I don't know it just you can tell Michael Bay was present on the set and I guess I didn't like that part of the movie so overall guys I give TMNT or I should say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the 2014 reboot an 8 out of 10 I think it's a good solid film it's a fun popcorn flick but there's just some things like plot cheats and bad CGI for Master Splinter some perverted comments from Will Arnett's character that just really got old very quick uh, some moments in the film that were obviously personally selected by Michael Bay, obviously, and some occasional shaky cam that kind of got in the way of what could have been a really neat experience for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But like I said, 8 out of 10, it's not horrible. Uh, if you do see it in the theater, I don't think you'll be completely mad of spending some money on it. But at the same time, you know, it's I think it would make a great red box rental if you want to wait that long for it. Um, 8 out of 10 for me, it's good. Not great. I wouldn't hate myself for watching it again. Uh, and like I said, at the same time, I wouldn't be too upset if a sequel for this were to get made. I would go see it. Um, but at the same time, I think we really could have gotten a better Turtles film. Just my opinion. 8 out of 10 for me once again. Good film, but at the same time, not, not spectacular by any stretch of the imagination.